The story of ocean science at Harvard actually begins with Louis Agassiz, the founder of Harvard's Museum of Comparative Zoology. About the time the museum was founded, the first major oceanographic expedition called the Challenger Expedition was producing new deep ocean results, but still they were limited to the depth to which they could sample. And there were people who strongly believed that there was probably a depth below which no life existed. Louis Agassiz's son, Alexander, uh, worked with his father before he enrolled at Harvard. Louis had a very specific interest in marine organisms, and Alexander um, followed uh, with his own interest in marine invertebrates. He was interested in knowing how to better sample the ocean and how to understand the connections between what was happening in the surface of the ocean and the deep ocean. In a series of cruises, he deployed new technologies. For example, begin to use steel wire rather than, than rope for deep trawls, which enable them to go to greater depths. Alexander Agassiz was able to demonstrate that with deeper and deeper sampling techniques, one always found living organisms. And he was the first to posit that it is that small bits and pieces of organisms on the surface that make their way into the deep ocean that provides the nutrition for organisms in the deep sea and the ocean floor. He made connections between different parts of the food web, between the upper ocean and the deep ocean, that allowed people to understand better how the ocean worked in its entirety. Henry Bryant Bigelow was quite interested in expanding the study of ocean science to include not just the presence and absence of organisms, but measurements of physical and chemical properties. Focusing on plankton as well as the fishes, realizing that it was the cycle of plankton production in the Gulf of Maine that gave rise to our extraordinarily successful fisheries. He is often considered to be uh, really one of the founders of, of modern ocean science. Since Bigelow's time, ocean science has continued to progress in part with the development of new technologies. We saw um, a, an expansion of U.S. oceanographic research uh, following World War II. In naval warfare, meteorology and oceanography must be considered as one discipline. Ships and expeditions became more sophisticated. They were able to retrieve sediments able to look and find out that although there was very low biomass from the deep sea, it was extremely diverse. But basically there's not much food in the deep sea, so nothing, you know, they were thought to just be sparse. 1960, with the dive of the Bathyscaphe Trieste into the Mariana Trench, a new era in deep sea research began. For the first time, man descended into the deepest part of the ocean, nearly seven miles down. Professor Ruth Turner, who was a malacologist here at Harvard, uh, she was one of the first scientists involved in the hydrothermal vent research. And that's because she was a pioneer in deep sea biology research, focusing primarily on shipworms, which are actually bivalves, and the associated communities that would be found in this fallen wood. With the discovery of the deep sea hydrothermal vents in 1977, these are oases of animals surrounding these warm vents that bring the sulfide and the hydrogen and other chemicals that bacteria live on that then feed the ecosystem. And that was uh, uh, unprecedented. We've learned over the last uh, several decades that it's the life processes in the ocean that over the long run pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and bind it in the deep ocean. This is the only place in the planet where you're still going to discover very large animals, new forms of life, new chemistries for the environment, organisms that use different types of habitats and different types of chemistries. We've only explored a very tiny, tiny fraction of the three-dimensional environment that is the ocean. We know something about the surface, we know some things about the bottom, we know very little about the water column, and I think that's where a lot of the new discoveries for new biodiversity are going to be coming in the next few years.